Hi, I'm Malia. And I am Jen. And we're owners of True Form Tiny. So welcome to True Form Tiny. We're a premier tiny house builder here in Eugene, Oregon. We've built over 300 tiny homes in the last five years. We're excited to show you our facility and our shop, so come on, take a look. My history is building new houses, remodels for uh, many, many years. And, and green building. And green building, yeah. So I went through, that, that was a passion of mine. I was one of the first Leeds for Homes builders in the area. My background is uh, fine art and accounting. And I've always loved interior design and I don't know why I'm not an architect because like those two brains equal architect. Now with our tiny home business, I'm kind of an architect. Jen plus me equal an architect because I have the design and the, the aesthetic and kind of the spatial and Jen has the how can we actually pull this off and build it. Also our backgrounds are living tiny. We both lived tiny. We lived in eco-villages and intentional community. My parents built a tiny house. I grew up in a tiny house for about a couple summers when they were tree planters. And so they wanted to get out of the you mud. You can see on our website a yeah. little picture of little yeah. three-year-old Jen <laughs> with John. And, and so that was like my Justin introduction. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Yeah, so there are two pathways that you can go with us. Uh, you can go to our website and choose models that are pre-designed and choose all the finishes. The second pathway is to actually go through a fully custom design process with me where I can 3D do 3D models for you. We can sit over Zoom and try out different colors and finishes on your model and you can see how the space actually looks in three dimensions. So now we're all decided through our design and our plan set and now the trailer showed up. So take a look at what we've got here. This is an example of one of our trailers. I believe this one's a 28 footer and there's different axle sizes and types depending on the length of your trailer. This one is a triple axle. You'll notice right off the bat what we do is insulate the floor. So it's all three inch poly iso rigid insulation. We put that down as a standard in all our builds. You'll also notice that this is a way that we attach our wood framing to our steel structure. So this is another key way of keeping everything together. It's a very common way in building to deal with um, connection between a foundation, which is our steel trailer, and our tiny house. So what we have here is this is where our trailer comes right in and this is our framing area. So we just have our production spot, a lot of cutting going on here, and our layout of our trailer. So this model right now is, and the roof's not on yet, but the walls have gone up. It goes pretty quickly. The stage takes a couple days, and then you can see the roof will go on in about four to five days, it will be all framed out. Um, we can take a peek inside a little bit. So we're all braced up and ready for our sheathing, which is halfway done. Um, so it's just a very similar situation to residential framing. Right now, it looks like a little bit of chaos. Soon, it's gonna look like this model. Now this one, of course, is a different model. It's a park model, so it's quite a bit longer and wider. But this situation, the windows are in, building paper's on. Um, also another very standard thing in residential compared to our product. But the one big thing that we really pay attention to is that exterior envelope because you have to go the extra mile to make sure it's sealed and protected because that water is gonna get in. We have a very durable building wrap. Right now you can see the siding going up. This model provides a lap siding. And we have different types of sidings. There's you know everything from our more modern urban paneling products to um, shakes to uh, board and batten. So we do the gamut. So this one is a park model. So we build two different types of recreational vehicles. One's a travel trailer and one's a park model. A travel trailer, think of it as you can pick it up and within 30 minutes you're down the road. A park model doesn't have that requirement. So it can be over width meaning over eight and a half feet wide to go down the road. It could be over height. We don't go over 14 feet on ours because we like to keep our permit costs down. If it's under 14 feet, it can go down the freeway really easily. 
even though this one is about 10 and a half feet wide, it'll need a permit to go down the road. But if you have a licensed and insured transporter, it's not a problem. So it's a big structure. I mean, if you go inside, it really feels like a home. That extra width, um, you get the elbow room, you get the walk around island, things like that that make a big difference. So right now in this park model, we've had, you can see the uh, utilities really well. There's our electrical is all run, our plumbing's all run. It's ready for the next stage. Next stage in this situation is spray foam. So we spray foam all our ceilings. So we have a three and a half inch standard bay. So our, our rafters are three and a half inch deep. And so we'll fill that um, bay up with insulation to the next one, which is our interior and um, wall boards and ceiling boards. There's definitely challenges. In a big kind of 5,000 foot perspective, it's a simple structure. Placing it in a way that all the different components, the utilities and the um, storage solutions and all that stuff works functionally so you can maintain it and also aesthetically it looks good. Right? We've developed ways and standards and techniques to kind of execute these different problems pretty quickly. Like where do you put your water heater? Does that work for all the units? Yes, great. Um, can allow for that water heater to interface with the outside. And we put a lot of on-demand water heaters in, so it has to have this venting. So there's different requirements for our different utilities. It's not a complex problem, but you add problem, 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 and some things don't work as well as others. Some things take longer, so. As a builder, like when we learn how to do something right, we try to stick with that method and use it in the future. And then that can impede on the design. And sometimes we have to say, oh, well, we can't do that because of this, because we want it to be successful. But yeah, we call it the, the tiny home one inch factor. One thing changes just half an inch or something, and it changes everything down the line. One inch could mean a complete redesign of the whole tiny home. It's, it's amazing. Like, it's like, okay, now this just doesn't work. I, have to, I feel like I have to start over. So this unit right here is um, getting pretty close. The siding has been put on. And so the next stage on the exterior would be prepping for paint. On the interior, they're well on their way for the, the wall boards and the ceiling boards. So the wall boards are pretty much done in this one, except for this wall right here. You can see the wall boards going up. The ceiling boards are next up there. And then after that, we also have our window trim. So right now everything's rough and it will be soon having um, window casing. This is a great example of one of our bathrooms. It's a little larger. We have two sizes typically, a five foot and a three foot. And this is our five foot bathroom. The nice thing about the five foot bathrooms is you can put the washer dryer in there. So right now we're at one where that's been painted on the exterior. The awning are, is a removable awning. That thing's up just for fit and finish. And inside we're pretty close to the end. In most of our models, we have a metalwork staircase, um, stair rail. So this staircase still has one more step to be put in here. It's an angled step. But after that step, that handrail goes right up here. So it's a nice and safe solution that we give our customers to get up and down. There's also another one that will go up here to kind of for the, the loft area. Right now we have our secondary loft solution where it's just a, this is a storage loft, so it's not a large handrail, but these two components create our railing and this will be our ladder rail or a ladder hook. I come to him staging. and I say, can I, can I do this? Is this possible? Can I, can I yeah. build it like this? And he'll say, well, um, you're gonna need a massive beam from here to here, <laughs> or you know something that's just like, whoa, okay, I totally didn't realize it. You know, from a contractor perspective, having good design is uh, huge. I like being involved in design decisions, and I have two cents, but having Malia drive this um, direction of this design, it's really what makes us, us. This craftsman component is key. You have to really execute the design. But without that first step of getting a good design, 
smart design, well thought out, so it feels good and looks good. Why do I like this space? Having that design component is critical. So then she's got this amazing, this design concept. We execute it, we build it, and then we don't even know what, I mean, that's only half of it because Malia's already thinking about how everything gets placed in there and the colors and the couch even to the tile color. It's kind of like that's the other blossom that happens at the end of the jobs. We have a couple different styles. We do a country craftsman aesthetic and an urban modern aesthetic. We're able to take a similar floor plan for both of these aesthetics and make them look totally different, different stylistically. So for instance, we have a modern and an urban. The urban, you have cleaner straight lines, smoother surfaces, a little less happening. Not, And with Craftsman, you have like a lot of heavy trim work and stuff that kind of covers up seams and transitions. In the modern aesthetic, we're trying to be more precise about how those, those materials come up next to each other. So with the modern aesthetic, we're having less, a little less symmetry, like with the placement of windows, so they won't be you know, equal and right next to each other. You might have a little window up here and a big window down here, playing with shapes a little bit more, whereas with the Craftsman aesthetic, there's a lot of symmetry with windows being the same height and in line with each other. Also, the roof lines are very different. So in an urban aesthetic, you'll have a lot of shed roofs. You might have crazy hipped roofs, which one of our models have. And then it, you have more gable roof lines and dormers in the Craftsman aesthetic. So one of the models that we've developed that is behind us here, and it's really focused on that backyard compact space where somebody needs an extra room for a teenager or wants to put in an Airbnb, but they only have this little space of side yard, so you have to maximize your volume, right? So we uh, came up with this model. It's a simple shed roof. A lot of the decisions were made to keep the price down, so it's more of on an affordable um, pathway. Interior has pre-finished plywood, for example, so it still has this clean Scandinavian feel, but lofted for your sleeping area. You don't have a downstairs sleeping option. It's upstairs. Um, small bathroom, but very functional. I think we hit a nice spot for a certain clientele that's needing something to put in their backyard. On the other side of the spectrum, we have the Cascade Max, which is a little bit more Craftsman style, a little larger. So this Cascade Max, we're on the tail end of construction. Right now, we are, the cabinets are in, the countertops are going in tomorrow. Um, the painters, as you can see, are bustling inside, caulking and painting everything. It's our newest model in our series. It's all made for living and it's about 360 square feet. It's 36 feet long, 10 and a half feet wide. The exterior on this model, it is a little bit of a mashup. It's definitely a modern kind of farmhouse aesthetic. We've got a stained black cedar, which is definitely more usually seen more on our modern models and then we're mixing it with an all-white painted exterior. There's the gable roof line, which leans more toward the Craftsman aesthetic. You can see corbels, which aren't actually a structural element. They're purely aesthetic. It's to just add a little bit of a natural wood, wood tone here and there. Our favorite parts of the Cascade Max is that kind of mashup of of bringing in some of the modern elements and also having a craftsman aesthetic. So the windows aren't partitioned however they could be if a client wanted them to be. There's a lot of transoms and a ton of light coming in. It just feels really big and open. And it's appealing to folks that don't want to have to climb stairs or a ladder for sleeping. So there's a downstairs bedroom, a really big bathroom, and you actually have options on whether you want to use a lot of that bathroom space for storage, a closet space, or if you want to have a shower and a bathtub. In this arrangement, the customer chose to swap out the bathtub area for closet space. So there's a little broom closet in the bathroom. There's a small vanity. It's about 40 inches wide. 
There's a wall mounted toilet and this was to accommodate the under floor plumbing. It's got a huge kitchen and a comfortable living space. In this particular model, the client chose to move the kitchen. Instead of being on the very end of the model, they moved it next to the bathroom. So in this kitchen, it's it's a nice triangulated space. So the sink is up against the window, so when you're use, utilizing the sink, you can look out the window. And then triangulated from that is a workspace to your left and range to your right. And then behind you is the refrigerator. And then there's a nice big pantry with pullouts. On the peninsula, there's tons of storage, drawers and cabinets, and also just a little overhang for an eating area. The living room's nine feet by 10 and a half feet, and it's a pretty good size for a tiny home. For this layout, we enlarged the bedroom. So normally you would fit a queen into this bedroom, but it's been expanded because this customer is dealing with cancer issues and they needed more space to fit some machinery and equipment for their condition. And they also wanted to maximize their storage. So we have added a closet and um, headboard storage. There's just the perception that tiny homes should cost a certain amount. And you can get tiny homes in any range of any price range. It's, it's all about what kind of tiny home do you want and what price do you want to pay? And are you willing to forego this or that to achieve what you're wanting to achieve? For us, we've chosen, because we just want to create beauty, we've chosen to go the more luxury, the more aesthetically beautiful pathway and using really good materials and not compromising on things. And that's from the ground up. So even our least expensive unit is still more expensive because we're not willing to compromise on those materials. And because we build this way, there are system elements that also make it cost more. You know, the amount of space it takes to organize everybody's things, the amount of personnel it takes to make sure that this gets to the right place or this happens correctly. All that stuff just adds up a lot. So we're a solution for people to build truly custom homes and it, it costs us a lot to be able to do that. There's always challenges with building. It doesn't matter if it's a big house or a tiny house. And it really takes knowledgeable craftspeople to efficiently get through problems and make better solutions, make things faster. Yeah, I'm not a super controlling designer, so like I'll come up with a concept and then a lot of times I just trust that our people on the floor, we all work together to come up with a solution on how to make it happen and make it look good. I feel like each one of them is a little little piece of art, you know, like why does a potter make pottery? It's, it feels the same to me, like like starting with nothing and then watching it become something and and trying to make it the best it can be. for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.